Okay, welcome to Cloud Twin for Tuesdays. My name is Patrick Sotomi Bogu, and today we are still uh, on the peripheral. We are still building up our DevOps class. And um, so far, we did our onboarding yesterday. This February session is really special because catalyzed so many things. We started during the weekend, we couldn't onboard because the last session couldn't, we couldn't round up their session before 19th. So we completed their session on the 19th and 20th was not feasible for us. So this session actually started yesterday. And yesterday we just did a little introduction about ourselves and brought some people, some of our alumni to come and inspire us, which they have done. But today we are going to be talking about DevOps. But the advantage of this session is that the kind of DevOps we are going into is different from the DevOps that others have gone through because DevOps is evolving on a daily basis. You understand? Before DevOps is like a distance between human. We are just DevOps is one side, engineers are one side, but now DevOps is now part of us. It's part of all software development and life cycle. And the idea of being a specialist is out of the table. We are all generalists. So we're going to be talking about DevOps in this new environment. And we're going to be also talking about DevSecOps, that means developers, security, and operations, so that anybody that goes through this training will be able to understand development processes, security processes, operation processes, cloud infrastructure, agile management. So the reason is this, all these stack that I mentioned, they are professional stack, you understand? And we're also gonna be talking about business and lean management. So when we do that, the advantage is that across this stack, you may end up becoming a DevOps, DevSecOps engineer, which will be okay, cloud engineer, which will be fantastic, SROE engineer, which will be super, or a developer, which is going to be very interesting, or you end up becoming an operation person, or you end up becoming a manager, which is under IGI, or even if you are a business analyst, the advantage of this training is that you're going to give you an, a general overview of what is actually going on in the application development lifecycle. So it's going to give you a very strong technical hands-on because it's going to be 90% hands-on, 90% hands-on. So and then that is the course what we're going to do today. So, and uh, the, my name again is Sotone Patrick Aibogu. I have close to 15 years experience in cloud engineering infrastructure, and I've been in the sphere of cloud engineering since 2014, and uh, DevSecOps since uh, three years. DevSecOps is not even up to three years old, so we are part of the pioneers of DevSecOps, and we're also part of the pioneer of SROE. SROE has been there for a very long time, but it became into limelight maybe four to five years old. But we have been practicing SROE, that is site reliability engineering, since 2014, even before 2014. So believe me when I said I understand this system. It's not that we are just there, we are still learning, we are still upgrading our skill sets. But uh, the people that have gone through our training so far have so many success stories. So the, this is our game. Our aim is not only just to prepare you to start looking for a job. If you have an idea of any application you want to develop, any product you think you want to bring out, it's also an opportunity for you because at the end of this training, you should be able to think about a product, develop a product, or send a product to developers to do and manage your processes. You understand me? So that is it. Because as I was saying yesterday, very soon, we, the idea of only using, uh, going to a system to log, log, develop your application is already going out of date. Because now so many mobile apps, so many AI tools are already coming out that you can just put on your phone and you develop an application. But even at that, if you don't understand the processes it takes, you end up developing a substandard application because the system may be fast that may be automated, but the principles still remains the same. So what we are going to be talking about is the principle. And uh, it's more than just learning the tools. It's also about you knowing, the, having the culture, having the mentality of a DevOps engineer. So this is it. So um, develop, development started with planning. Then after you plan, you plan, you communicate, you design, then you use agile processes. After the view, have agreed, okay, this is the product we want to develop. You send a product to the development team, to the operation team, and this is what happened. These are the tools that we're going to be using. First of all, the developers will come together. For example, if I have an application I want to develop, I'll call say, okay, we have 
agree that okay, we want to design a, an a, an application that can analyze business very well without the help of people, maybe a business analyst. So that is the product we want to do. Then the thing is that I would design how the application we go to onboard people. Maybe the company that want to use the application, how they will use it, how they will register, and how the application is going to be delivered through a web website or web app or even a mobile app. I will tell them. So we already have an idea and overall view. So what comes to my mind is that okay, I will take the system to an architect, a solution architect. The person will say, okay, this this is how it's going to happen. Somebody will have to design this. Somebody will have to let me let me break it down here. Let me use. Sorry, in my class, I don't. I always I always build my class with my student. The reason is that when I build it together, you will never forget. You understand? The first thing that comes when you have a product is planning, is your product planning. And this product planning in, in involves project uh, the same the same normal project management procedures, but just as in a very coincised way using agile processes. And we're going to be talking about agile. This part of our things. So when you plan, you discuss your product. You meet a product owner. That means a graphics engineer that can pro provide a form of a slideshow of the product from one step to the other. Then after a product product owner comes owner comes and, and explain what is going to, that's why we're going to be doing IGI. We're going to be doing Scrum. It's part of, we're going to be talking about product ownership. Then after you do that, then the product owner will now break it down. This product owner will understand the idea, breaks it down. Then after you have finished breaking it down, then the solution architect will pick it up, which is also part of engineering. It's also part of cloud engineering. So solution architect mostly comes from the development of background. Somebody that have another view that I've developed an application before, I know what and what and what can break, will come and break it down. Okay, this, let's say this one, we have the API, the gateway for, for the people that want to use it. Somebody will have to do administration. You have to register. You have to do this. Okay, uh, there will be a place where all the data will be saved, be stored. Okay, what kind of data are we looking at? What kind of user are we using, looking at? Are we using a relational database or graphics? Okay, if it's graphic, let's use MongoDB. If it's a relational database, maybe use name and password. Let's use let's use Nama, uh, Postgre or MySQL. If the solution architect will come and design. At the end of the training, you also understand the more about solution architect. But I'm going to be talking about the of it. Then after that, design the infrastructure. So we are not going to be using the data center anymore. We're going to be using the cloud. Which kind of cloud infrastructure we use? What kind of tools that that cloud infrastructure provides? that we can just use of the chef sort of designing our application. So let's try to analyze it. After analyzing it, to now give it to a developer. A developer, developer will be a people that can, uh, that, can this, that can bring out these graphics that this product owner have done, you understand me? And the, the solution architect have broken down. The solution architect have broken it down. So the, the solution architect, we now, send it to a lead manager, which is a servant manager. It's called Moses and Scrum Master, Scrum Master. Or, or you can also call it Agile Manager. So it depends on how you call it, they are all the same. There's also one ask, okay, fine. What do I need for this, uh, this idea that has already been broken down into different places? Okay, I need the developer. I need somebody that will develop the front end. I need somebody that will develop the back end. What is the front end? Front end is the, the website that you visit, that I means the graphical user interface that people can interact with, like a web app, like a mobile app. When you open your mobile mobile app, that Google that you see is front end. You understand me? It's easy, it's, it's, it's explainable. You just click and click. You understand? This is where the front end will come. We say, okay, and this is what the front end is going to do. Then after the front end, I've done that. Uh, the front end will, will now tell me, okay, this is the application I'm going to use. I like to use React in my front end. The other one will say, no, I don't use React. I use uh, uh, JavaScript. You understand? The other one will say, no, I don't use JavaScript. I use, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. we can hear you. Can hear you. So, after that one, I've completed in doing that. Okay, this is what I want. Then JavaScript, I need, I, I can use JavaScript. 
very well. The JavaScript, they will now come and design. But you know, I can use Goland. Some people will say I use WordPress. Some people will say I use PHP. Doesn't matter what you use. But as far as you can design the graphics that the product owner have already explained, you understand? Then developer will start working. So you can have five developers developing the front end. I mean, talking about the website, the WWW that you do. Like, let me give you an example of a front end for some of us that are not into IT. When I say, uh, just give me any site. Let's say Google. Come on, Google self. Google. Google.com. You see. Anything that it displays here that I can click is called front end. It's also known as UI. And this is a front end. This is this is a front end for Google search. If I now go to Google like that, I click Google, and you can see whatever thing that appears that you can click and use is called the user interface, also known as front end. So, but there are things that make the front end to work. There are some there are some um, some compute power. There are some system that are happy to manage. The my data are people that have gone into the website and people that visit, people that goes, the username that they save, the username that they, you understand me? But the things that actually do the man manipulations of those data, they are called backend back engineers. So the backend engineers will come and say, okay, if the front, for this thing to work, you can, you have to do this. So you will now have, to, for this thing to work, okay, we need a database management system. Since we are going to be saving, People's password and username. Let's use national database. So all of them they will not design it. So the front end will design it. So the back end will not design. What will make the front end to work? So we have front end. That's why I said our training. This set is going to be very special because I'm ready to just go all out and make it look like a real life environment. So the front end will come. The back end will design what will make the applic the back side to work. So these developers will now come together. They will agree on that. Then after they have done what they have agreed on, they will now have to, they will, they will then give it, after they have developed the application, they will now give it to an operation team. The operation team, their work is to set up, first, before you have to have an infrastructure team. I was when then, you know, then if you do CCNA, CCNP, you'll be Baba because you'll be the network guy. You have the network team. We have the database team. We have the application team or different team in the IT world. That was why you think before if you are just one side, you are good. You say this guy is a bad database administrator. Totally for you. Now, if you're a database administrator, you are nothing for you because some applications are already doing the work for you on your behalf. So the database team will come now, and they will now come start designing. Then after that, then, then after the front end, the back end, and the operation team, these are the people that will not take the application and put it inside a server and put it inside the, the VM or whatever they want to do and configure it so that people can use it. Then after that, we now have the feedback team. Feedback team. They are also part of operation, just that they are a form of business operation, business operation. Their own is to make sure that, okay, customer are using it. If there's issue, you understand me? Now we now have the support team. We have now have another team called the support team, the technical support team. So in case there's an issue, they escalate it. You have the customer relation. And this is how the product, in case there's an issue, everybody come back to the product and they keep doing it. But the challenge was that between this operation and this development, there's always a problem. Developer will develop something, they will give it operation. Operation will say the developer did not develop it well. The developer will say they test it. The operation will say they did not test it. So there was always crisis between here and here. Then the management, before it, we were not using agile management, we were using waterfall management, which is regular whole school management. You understand? Uh, you, you, bring your, you bring your business analyst, you bring your, you bring your, your specialist, you bring your project manager, you, you now have a meeting and sit down. They will now give it to the developer to go and test. After they do it, they do a prototype, they'll bring it back to the team. They'll start discussing and discussing and discussing at times. It will take like almost three years for, to design an application. But that one has been eliminated because they now use IGI processes. That's one of the things I'm going to be talking about. Then the product owner before there's not like they were a product owner, right? But they were not part of the IGI system. They work in a separate, separate team. And the planning team, the planning committee, you know, is that these things are everything you see here now, they are now grouped, grouped together. 
and they call the team DevOps team. They call all these teams. Let me, let me tell you the truth. DevOps is more than people that support operation team and developers. DevOps is an ideology that's able to automate everything that takes place in this software. Because all these things are software development lifecycle. These processes are just listed and they are called SLDC. SLDC means software development lifecycle. This is the life cycle of the software. So starting from the planning to the product owner, to the solution architect, to the IGI processes, to developers or operation. I know if you go to the internet, what you are going to see more, you're going to be seeing development and operation, DevOps. <laughs> DevOps is more than that. DevOps is more than that. Just that this is one of the major solutions that DevOps provides. This is one of the things that made DevOps strives in the IT world. In fact, this is why they even call it DevOps, because it stands between these two. But the truth is that as a DevOps engineer, it's more than standing between these things. It's standing between everybody. You understand me? Just that this was the great, this was their first solution that they were able to provide to the team. So as a DevOps engineer, you must understand planning. You must understand, but understand product ownership. How do people perceive? You must be able to provide the solution that even when people complain, the complaint will be heard immediately and the, the features of that complaint will be created and be, be, be integrated and be, be, be developed, be integrated and be delivered and also be deployed and be consumed. Actually, you've heard of the word CICD. That's where it comes in. CICD, continuous development, continuous, de continuous development, continuous de uh, integration. Continuous, uh, continuous development, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. CI, CD, CD, CD. The CD is actually three. You understand me? So these are the three things. Continuous development, continuous integration, continuous development, de uh, delivery, and continuous deployment. Meaning because as a developer engineer, you are supposed to provide a system that is very easy for all these things to take place within a few seconds. So that is it. And infrastructure is part of it. So this operation team, before operation is somebody that just carry an application and put it in a server that, your, that the, the operation that the infrastructure team have created. But funny enough, sorry, sorry to bust your bubble. My career as a developer engineer, I, I perform more operation team, more, more infrastructure team, meaning I do networking job, I do, I do networking job, I do server management, server configuration, I do deployment of application, I do security of application, I do, I help developers to help them work, develop the application fast. I provide feedback. I help product owner to, to, to analyze because we also have a meeting where develop team are also part of the product management and product analysis will analyze. I've also joined the planning team. So this is it. That is why develop engineer is highly sorted. So it's more than just providing technical support. It's actually making sure that the whole team works. So if you are a DevOps engineer and you are a business, you are and you are a an agile, agile, agile uh, manager, which is known as Scrum Master or Kanban Master or whatever manager master you call yourself, and you are a DevOps engineer, you are very, very useful. You can lead a team successfully. If you are a business analyst, because you you play, you support every part of the business, you should be able to provide good solution to the whole system. And in case somebody, a developer is trying to play smart, because one of the things, I know one of the challenges we always have is the developers, because they, because they, they, they are the one that writes the code. They can tell you that for them to write one code, we take two, one month. Meanwhile, you know that based on standards, it's supposed to take one week. You know, if you take one month, it's going to bring more cost to the company. But if we take one week, it's going to cut cost. So these are the things they will be paying you for. Because you have been part of DevOps team, you understand DevOps methodology. When they are talking jargons, by the time you start talking, they will listen to you and you can control. Otherwise, by the time they tell you Git and GitHub and CIC and Linux, you just run away. You understand? These are the reasons why most companies are looking for technical people. So back to this. We are going to be, this, this part talks about helping developers. These are the things that developers use to build the application. They use Git to manage the code. You know, most of these applications is written in code. 
You understand me? If it's Java, what's the code? The code is just a line of instruction that computer understands. We are going to be doing it. It's not a big thing. Just like when you are chatting with your friend in the other way around, by the time you say B-R-O-B, right? Your friend understand B-R-O-B means be right back, right? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, Hello? I, I think your network is going. You have a glitch. Oh, wow. When, how long is it? Sorry, don't worry. After next week, this whole thing will be a thing of a past. You will not, you will not even notice that this thing exists. It turns out for this network glitch, I have a fiber of 20 Mbps, which I used to work. So, so pardon me on this. Okay, now let's please. Where did you meet? Where did, did, did I miss it? So that I can just quick do a quick recap. Huh? Can you hear me now? Hello, mic check. Mic check. Mic check. The internet is not just good. Okay, for this, <laughs> this our training, we're going to add one extra week to it. That's if we discover that we're not able to meet up with all these things. Please, pardon me, pardon me for today. But if you can hear me, can you hear me? This meeting is being recorded. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? Ah, please, I need response. She's better. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? Hello? Hello? OK. Better. Yes, I hear you. Hello? OK. Hi. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so oh, but I think it's still breaking up. It's still breaking up. Okay, let me just rush this. Don't worry. But I will, I, maybe I will have to okay, read. It's back now. I think it's clear now. Okay. So for the developers, the developers use, there's a place where they put the code that they are using. That code, there's a place they put, they call it code base. So the tools they use to manage their code base is called Git and GitHub. So for you to be able to support and help developers to work well, you must understand Git and GitHub. So that's why we're going to be doing Git and GitHub. First of all, uh, for they also use Docker, but we're not going to be treating all these things because it's not only Git and GitHub they use. They are using so many things. But if you understand Git and GitHub, you'll be able to understand every other code base. Whether you call it Cloud now or you call it uh, GitLab, or you call it Bitbucket, you understand? They are all the same. They use the same language called Git. So I'm going to be learning that. I'm going to be learning that. Then we are going to be taking one one tools. Then for Tinos integration and deployment, we're going to be using Jenkins. I'm also going to use Terraform. We're going to talk about Terraform. Then for deployment, we're going to be talking about Kubernetes and VM virtual machines. For operation, we're going to be talking about Jira. We want to be we want to be treating Jira. Then for planning, we're going to be using um, um, these three. We're going to also use Jira too. Jira, but they also use Jira for planning too. You, know, you can this these ones are not if uh, okay. Enterprise architect, IBM, relational. But most of the things we use here, we use Confluence. We use Confluence for most popularly used is Confluence. I use Confluence, the same thing as all this project management and everything. It's also owned by Atlasia, the owner of this Jira. Then for, for okay, we're talking about, for feedback, we're gonna be using Slack. Talk about Slack, we're gonna be using our Zoom. I'm gonna be using WhatsApp for our feedback. And these are the processes. For if I was taking a, a master class, I will just assume that everybody understands it. So I will just move straight, start talking about Jira and everything. But since I'm new, I'm not talking about masterclass. I'm talking about people that are ready to learn. So we are going to go down and break it down. So I'm going to be using 
simple language, simple terms. I can even go to your village and use something from there. I go to America and use a word from there. But my own aim is to make sure that at the end of this training, everybody have a picture of what we are going to be learning. If you look at all these life cycle, you discover that there are so many things that was not mentioned here. The like internet security was not mentioned here, which is the bedrock that lies that ties everything together. We're going to be talking about internet security. We're going to be doing a course and going to be certified in internet security. Then you can look at it very well. You can discover that nothing like Linus was mentioned here. That is why if you learn DevOps from the internet, from YouTube, you will not be able to function well because all these things, the foundation that all these things lies is, is Linus from Git to Docker to Jenkins to even Jira to even Kubernetes. They are all the language you use is Bash, B A S H, and other languages. So that's why we are going to start our class. I will appreciate if by the end of next week we are able to have either Linus or Mac ready. Because I don't want a situation whereby we start full flesh. Eh? And so people are lagging behind because I've noticed that in all my labs so far, that has been the major challenge people have. One, they would did some of them have not installed Linux, but they'll say they have done it. Some of them may have installed it. Uh, maybe they didn't install the updated version, they're having issues, they won't mention it. So by the time they miss one lab, they want to catch up. With the other lab, they are already missing it. Just like I think the IETS exam, especially listening, and you've missed answer number one or number two. What will happen to you? The remaining one, because the speaker keeps speaking, they are not going to repeat it. So if, even if you watch your video, you may not be able to catch up. You understand? So um, that this is this is this is the whole thing we're going to be learning. So let me refresh again. From all our labs, these are the courses we are going to be. Excuse me. These are the courses we are going to be doing. These are a few courses mentioned here, but there are still going to be more. We're going to be talking about Linux, which is the beginning of our lab. You understand? Then we're going to be talking about Git and GitHub, Agile. We're going to be talking about VS Code, IAM. When we reach IAM, this IAM talk about security. We're going to be talking about 14. We're going to use the popular security model known as Fortinet. Then we're going to AWS, we're going to use, because before, before you have an application running, you must have a data center. Some of us may not know where it's a data center, but some of us have seen it. We, we, you can, some data center may be, some infrastructure house could be a server room. I think some of us have had a body word server room, a room where they put all the servers. Now, people don't know how to put server in their office. They put server, so there's a company that have, that have multiple server that you just go and pay, you'll be using it. Those people, they are called public cloud, you understand? Like the AWS, GCP, they are just having servers and network and infrastructure. You just go there and subscribe and pay and start using it. So that is why we are going to be talking about one. We have so many of them and I'm certified. I can use many of them, but we're going to be using AWS because AWS is free. You can use free for one year. And uh, if you manage it very well, they may never collect money from you. So we're going to be doing that. And uh, we're going to be using Docker Kubernetes IAC infrastructure as a code, which is also known as uh, Terraform or Ansible, but we're using Terraform in this case. This is our course, our major course at time. There are still going to be other courses that will come in between. You understand me? But I'm going to emphasize on this. Okay. I've explained to us now, these are other tools. Like uh, we have the Ansible, we have the Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, Jenkins, Prometheus, Grandfara, SonarCube, Menvi, so many things. So I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be discussing that. So the course, uh, every class is peculiar. So as we continue our class, I'm going to be building our class together with us. So I may end up sharing this whole presentation to you but just know that this presentation is not only for you, it's for all the classes that are treated, you understand? But if you follow my lab successfully, by the time you carry, you have this book, this slide, you can even a glance have a revision of everything that we're going to be doing. A revision of everything. So 
I deliberately built my class by myself. And our video that we're going to be having, going to be sharing, going to be a reference point that you watch. So these are the same thing I just shared. So, Okay, these are the things we're going to be doing. Any other question? Do you have any question? Let's let's start our first our first talking about which is Linus. Any other question? We're going to be just treating Linus briefly. And if you have any question, please answer question. Any question? Do you have any question? Do you have any question? Mic check. Mic check. My check, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, it, it's breaking. Okay, um, let's do this. I just hope that this book come to fix this thing tomorrow, but notwithstanding, uh, let's start with our first thing. I want to start with this Linus. The advantage of Linus is that most of the reason why people, why we are taking Linus is that the company that provides Linus is an open source. Whatever open source, everybody can use it. Is is everybody can contribute to it? You can wake up one morning and take up something and build on it and use it and start creating your application. So, there, but there is a and most company also provide Linus training free of charge. But the challenge is that people don't like to learn. People don't like to read. And so people that even like to read, they don't know how to guide them to learn and learn these things. So they, that is why Cisco, we all know Cisco. It's a popular company that, uh, it's a popular company that actually deals on networking, infrastructure and everything. So they, they, they came up with a training, they call it NG. So can you hear me now? I want to do a simple course called Linus on Hash. That is going to be our first point of call. The reason why we are doing Linus on Hash is that it gives us the simple overview of how to navigate, how to use your own Linux system. By now, everybody's supposed to have gotten our Linux system so that by the time you start this Linus on Hash, you should be able to move around you just to have an appreciation. You just to have an appreciation of what we have. So this is what we're going to do. But uh, in our physical lab, I'm just going to explain to you what's, what's Linus. I think you're still breaking. Can you hear me now? Am I still breaking? Am I still breaking? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, this is not funny. This is not nice. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Please, if you can hear me, just say hi or just thump up. Let me see. Just indicate, if you can hear me, indicate, please.
your connection is in and out. Okay. Hello, Patrick. We can barely hear you. Okay. We can barely hear you. Okay, hold on. Okay, mm, for that reason, I think we're going to close in time today and uh, make sure that everything is back. I think by tomorrow, by this week, everything will be back. Patrick, there's no sound from your presentation in case you can hear us. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, this is this is very painful. Can you hear me now? Is it loudable? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? See the reason why we say we should vote for good governance. Somebody being in Nigeria, because of election, everything is crashing down. I don't know. I don't know what's, what's just happening in this country. Because of election, everything is just crashing down. Can you hear me now? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Timmy, can you hear me? Bolaji, can you hear me? Still breaking a bit. Still 